Let us talk about the third theory. And the third theory is the mutation theory. It was proposed by Hugo de Veres. Mutation theory of evolution. And it was proposed by Hugo de Veres. Now this mutation theory says that whatever changes take place are due to sudden changes in the genetic makeup which Hugo de Veres called mutation. A similar thing was observed by Darwin also. He did call those uh, sudden variations or sudden uh, different types of organisms which he found out as sports. But he did not pay much attention towards it because that number was very very less. Uh, Hugo de Veres, uh, the entire work was done on evening prime rose. The plant is called evening prime rose. Its scientific name is Oenothera Lamarckiana. Scientific name is Oenothera Lamarckiana. Now what exactly he was doing was, because this evening prime rose was growing in uh, the garden around his house, so he, his work was based on the study of this plant. What he did was, he selected some plants and after self-pollination, he found that majority of the plants majority of the plants showed minor variations. So this was the maximum number with minor variations. This was maximum and there were very few plants which showed some very different kind of change or variation. So very few showed major variations. Now when he self-pollinated the plants from this category, the few plants which he found out, so again on self-pollination, again he found two groups of plants. One was in maximum number that is majority and few. These majority of the plants showed again minor variations from the original that is from the parent type. So this was again minor variations and those few which he found those were with major variations. And when he observed these plants with major variations these variations which were there, they were actually in size, size of the flower, color of the flower, position of the flower, size of the plant. So these were the variations which were observed and then he analyzed, he found out that all those plants which showed major variations, there was a difference in the chromosome number. The normal uh, evening prime rose or Oenothera Lamarckiana which he used has chromosome number as 14. So this is the chromosome number and this is the diploid number that we are talking of. The variations which he observed or the plants in which this major variation was seen they had chromosome number different from this 40. The numbers were like 16, 20, 22, 24, 28, 30 and so on. So this change or sudden change or variation major difference which was seen from the parent variety was actually because of 
a sudden change in the number of chromosomes. He also found out a very different plant, different in flower size, shape, plant size and so many differences. He even called that plant by a different name and the name which was given to that plant was Oenothera gigas. So all these changes which were taking place were sudden changes because they were observed in the next generation. Parent generation did not show that change. Next generation, very few organisms showed this change. So if we observe change suddenly, then it has to be uh, a change in the genetic makeup. In variations, we talk about continuous and discontinuous variation. We have discussed this earlier. Continuous variations are slow variations. Normally, they go unnoticed. And discontinuous mutations are sudden mutations. And those are due to some change in the genetic makeup. And they cannot be ignored. They are very obvious. And parents don't show it, but the next generation would show it. Continuous and discontinuous variation was discussed by uh, Darwin also. Here, the main emphasis is on the discontinuous variation that is mutation. There are certain uh, examples or uh, experiments which are in support of this theory of uh, mutation. So let us talk about all those experiments or examples in support of this theory. One example this which we normally talk of is of Ancon sheep. Ancon sheep were uh, the sudden variety which was seen was with extremely short legs. So the normal sheep they had normal height like the present day sheep or goat and suddenly a variety was seen in that herd with exceptionally small legs. So with small legs. Now when this mutant or this mutation was seen in the sheep, uh, people who were having these sheep, they sort of, it was an advantage for them because these sheep could not jump over the fence. So it was uh, pretty much convenient for the owners of those sheep. Second, some other scientists performed a similar experiment and they also found the same result. So similar experiments, similar experiments by MacDougall and Shull. These two scientists performed the same experiment and they found same result. Next example that we can take off that is mutations is in case of many plants where there is a sudden change which is seen in the next variety which we also call polyploidy. So common in plants where we get polyploidy. So plants of one generation are normal and suddenly in the next generation some uh, distinct variations take place. Some of these variations are going to be useful, some are going to be not so useful or harmful. So depending upon whether these variations are useful for us or not, we can continue with uh, those things. So these are certain experiments or examples which go in support of the mutation theory. The points or uh, the comments which go against this theory is that mutations do occur but every time or in every generation the mutations are not seen that frequently. According to this uh, experiment which uh, Hugo de Veris performed it appeared that every time he self-pollinated those plants, he found certain mutant varieties. But that doesn't happen in uh, the real uh, natural condition. So these mutants which were found out, they were actually 
or they are not actually that frequently formed. So this was one theory or one logic which was going against this theory. But what was in favor of it was very uh, positive that variations do take place. These variations are definitely due to some change in the genetic makeup. Some variations are fruitful, some variations are harmful. So this has been observed. Only thing which was going against was that according to him, these mutations are happening very quickly, very fast, which doesn't happen. One more point which was against this was because of this particular plan and what Hugo de Vera said that all these mutations are due to change in the chromosome number. We now know that mutations can occur because of point mutation also. And we know many such examples where there are point mutations also. But his focus only was on the chromosomal number chain. That means in this plant, all those variations which were caused, they were actually due to change in the chromosome number. But this theory was uh, quite successful in explaining many, many points. Combining uh, Darwin's theory of natural selection and mutation theory by Hugo de Veris, the next theory was postulated, which is the most accepted theory and which we call the modern theory of evolution. So in the next video, we will start with the modern theory of evolution.